And one of the things they have in Pinch is a baby. A baby's cheek. <laughs> Damn! Oh, woo! I was about to say! I do the most. Roll it. Light it. Then I choke. Pass it to my bitch. Watch it choke. It is your oh shit, T you scared me. It is your boy. Boy. Monday. Hey, and we are back with number seven. I told you I was skipping number six. We back with number seven. Now listen, number six, no, 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 no spoilers. But number six was talking about alien. We got number seven here talking about robots. The robot invasion theory. I, I have no idea where he's going with this one. But, we shall find out. And with that being said, yeah, yeah, we're getting into it. Okay. All right, all right. So, I admit it. Some of my theories have been a little crazy lately. I mean, Goofy Goober alien death cult theory, it Pearl's was... dead mother theory. Let's maybe try and slow down a bit on this one. Nah, bro. There is a secret going. robot invasion happening in Bikini Bottom. Everywhere you look, robots have integrated themselves into society, kidnapping and replacing people with robot cyborgs, waiting for their chance to rise up and start the robot apocalypse. This is not a joke. I repeat, the robots are coming. The robots are coming. This is the robot invasion theory. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. This is my favorite thing, when T's just sit here next to me and just let me pay him while I'm watching videos. But he be like... <laughs> Tell him! Tell him! Ow. Oh. Sorry, what? You okay, dude? Uh, yeah, sorry, um... I've just got a lot on my mind. Alex, your cinematic... The, uh, cin SpongeBob your... theorizing going? You it's interrupted good. me. <laughs> good, um... I'm actually thinking about maybe stopping. Why? They're Why? huge. Yeah, I mean, people watch them. It's just, I didn't go to film school for three years just to make SpongeBob theories forever. Alex. Yeah, but I mean, it's just something you're doing now. Exactly. You do them like forever. Tell them, baby it's girl. Easy for you to say. I mean, what? You're a year out of film school and you're already directing commercials. Yeah, but I didn't go to film school to make commercials either. It's just something I'm doing for now. I like SpongeBob theories. Yeah. Tell them. Maybe, I don't know, these, uh, these videos also just, they, they take a lot to make. Alex, why you got that dad shirt and jacket on? You like a father. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not sure if I'm up for it anymore. Dude, up for it? You're just like watching cartoons all day, that sounds awesome. I would kill to have as many followers as you, man, I'd be set. I've been trying to get my film funded for months, and I still have nothing to show for it. You know, sounds like a pretty sweet gig you got there, but... Damn, she really concerned. Like, yo. Hey, it's time for another SpongeBob conspiracy. Wow, I just realized I've uh, I've been making SpongeBob videos for over a year now. That's uh, cool definitely too. did That's not cool. think that I'd still be making these a, a year later. But it's all worth it, right? Because you guys love them and I love making them and they're they're super easy to make. One of my favorite episodes of SpongeBob is the season three episode Crabborg. SpongeBob watches a scary robot movie, then okay. gets super paranoid about robots. Okay! And even kidnapping. I remember that! Robots. Okay! You think I'm a robot? We don't think. We, we know. know. <laughs> it's a really funny episode. It but is. I can't help but wonder if SpongeBob's fears might be a bit more justified than we thought. Yeah, because he the was episode freaking out. SB one two nine, we get yep. a first glimpse of the future. Two thousand years later. Oh, okay, uh, what's going on here? Why is everything? Chrome. Everything is chrome in the future. We see a world covered in chrome Damn. where everyone has been replaced with robotic people. SpongeBob, is that you? SpongeBob? No, I am SpongeBob. SpongeBob. And this yep. isn't the only time we see a future full of robots. In the season seven episode, Back to the Past, SpongeBob time travels to an alternate future where Man Ray takes over, and once again, people have been replaced by what? robots. And then, in the second SpongeBob movie, Sponge Out of Water, there's a deleted scene where SpongeBob and Plankton go to the future and see this. We did it! I wonder when we are. Excuse me, sir. Do you know what year this is? And he turns around here, robot! Ah, this is not deleted! <laughs> We didn't go back in time. I saw. I we see. We went in front in time. 
and there's even foreshadowing in episodes that take place in the present. In the Krusty Krab training video, we hear this. Well, luckily for you, Mr. Krab's fear of robot overlords keeps the balance of technology in check. And in Insecurity Guards, we can see- Boy, they just be saying shit in SpongeBob, bruh. They just be saying shit. They be letting you know, but you just gotta pay attention to it, man. An exhibit that clearly shows the evolution of SpongeBob eventually getting taken over by robots. Whoa. Okay, so there seems to Never be a lot that. of evidence for the future of Bikini Bottom being taken over by robots. But honestly, why does any of this matter? I mean, robots ruling the world exactly. is a pretty common depiction of the future in lots of different media. And even if this is the canonical future of the show, it's at the very least thousands of years in the future. It's not like we can already see this robot invasion happening in present day Bikini Bottom, right? Here's an interesting question But wait, question wait, wait, it take you 2,000 years to overrun humans, robots? You gotta do better, your AI is better than that! <laughs> SpongeBob, that's always bothered me. Why are there so many robots in the show? And I'm not talking about Sandy or Plankton's inventions. It makes sense for them to have robots since they're both genius inventors. Yeah. But why do hospitals and office buildings and amusement parks and Weenie Hut Juniors and many, many more places yeah, have such yeah, advanced yeah. robots? I mean, let's ignore the fact that they're underwater and first robots off, wouldn't really- First off, who's making these moves? Cause Sandy's not doing it, maybe. You know, she's that's a sneaky motherfucker. Sandy, Sandy's probably doing it. But I don't believe Plankton's doing it, so who's doing it? Makes sense down here. Bikini Bottom isn't like a super advanced society, right? You wouldn't really say that they have much futuristic technology, except when it comes to robots. But why? And what's even stranger is that there are many, many instances where these robots suddenly turn evil. Yeah. The first time I really started to notice this was in the season 7 episode, Tunnel of Glove. SpongeBob and Pearl get trapped in a Glove World boat ride that's full of animatronics. Patrick tries to set them free by breaking into the control room, but accidentally causes all the animatronics to suddenly turn evil and attack SpongeBob. Dang. This is a pretty basic cartoon trope. Someone accidentally breaks the controls, then the robot malfunctions and turns evil. This isn't really all that weird for SpongeBob. Okay. Except, what's strange about this is that Patrick doesn't break any controls. He hits a button labeled Animatronic Override, and that's what causes the robots to turn evil. So there's a button for this? There's a kill button? They aren't malfunctioning. The robots were in Why isn't it covered? Why isn't it why isn't it secure? What is going on out here? Designed to have a button that makes them attack people, but why? Then, in the episode Good Neighbors, Scooper discovers a flyer for a home security system that's suspiciously free despite it clearly being very advanced. Mm -hmm. After he sets it up, his house suddenly grows arms and legs and starts destroying Bikini Bottom. Yep. Wow, Squidward's house is destroying the neighborhood. How do you get kicked out by your house? And the people who annoy you every day are still there. It's something about you, Squidward. It's something about you. Now, to be fair, this was a malfunction caused by SpongeBob, but why would a simple home security system have giant arms and legs? I mean, the malfunction didn't create them, they were clearly already installed. They eventually do manage to stop the house, but what's really creepy about this is that we can still see signs of Squidward's house being sentient after this episode. Then, in the season 11 episode, Krusty Cleaners, SpongeBob and Patrick go to an office building and encounter a trash cleaning robot. The robot immediately attacks them for causing a mess. Oh, dang. Oh, my rump is roasting! But this time, there's no malfunction that causes this. It's working exactly as intended. Not only Damn. does the trash robot have a buzzsaw and a literal laser cannon, but it also turns all of the nearby machines into killer robots to help hunt- What? Who is attacks. designing this? So, where are all these places getting these super advanced robots, and more importantly, why are they all being programmed to suddenly turn evil? This is a question that stumped me for a while until I watched the season 11 episode, My Leg. This is the episode where I truly realized there was an actual conspiracy theory here, and not just cartoon antics. It's time we finally find out who is behind the robot invasion. Who you think it is? Who you think it is? Just, just give... It doesn't have to be logical. Just give an answer in your head right now. My answer? 
I have no goddamn clue. And it could be that. It could be that. Maybe halfway through, I'll get it, but. That's not no animal, Alex. That's no animal. You know that. Tentacle monster. Hey, it's a um, monster. I'm still serious about you leaving this house. Alex. It's not that I don't appreciate everything you've done for me. It's just, I think we want very different things. You know, I don't, I don't want it to come to this, but I will, I will use force if I have to. So you, you better go. The episode My Leg focuses on the reoccurring gag of this one fish always injuring his, his leg, leg. Yep, yep, yep. My leg! My leg! My leg! At one point in the episode, he goes to a hospital and meets a robot that works there. It's just a small throwaway gag. The robot never turns evil. Where's his leg? Strange. Don't take my leg! Don't take my leg! <laughs> but there's something awfully familiar about the robot's design. Let's go all the way back to the season 3 episode Plankton's Army, okay. which opens with Plankton trying to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula with a robot disguise. Don't tell me. Never know what trick he'll use to steal me secret Krabby Patty formula. Is it Karen? Is it Karen? Is it Karen? It would be a Karen thing to do. That would be a Karen thing to do. What a quaint restaurant. I think I will sample their wares. These robots have an uncanny similarity, right down to the same time. Right down, okay, oh my god! Maybe gosh. we just chalk this up to the showrunners being lazy and reusing assets. But SpongeBob has always had a pretty diverse amount of robot designs throughout the show. And it's not like this is a direct copy-paste either. They went to the effort to redesign the face and yeah, colors, but it was still clearly based on Plankton's robot. So. Here's my theory. Plankton has built many robots to try and steal the Krabby Patty secret formula, but I think after he fails to do so, he doesn't just throw them away. He redesigns the robots and then gives them to different businesses in Bikini Bottom with the intention to one day use them to take over the world once he has enough in place. I mean, we know what Plankton really okay. wants isn't the secret formula. Yeah, he really wants control of everything. That's, that's Plankton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's to rule the world. I will rule the world! And there's even the video game, Battle for Bikini Bottom, where Plankton tried to take over over using an army of robots. Yeah. So this theory doesn't seem too far-fetched for Plankton's character, but okay. we're gonna need a lot more evidence if we're gonna prove he's the one behind all the robots in Bikini Bottom. Now, that's a great business move for Plankton, you know, get these robots, build them, sell them. Bam! Fuck trying to get the Krusty Krabs recipe. I'm six billion in on robot sales. So I don't I don't see I don't see him not doing it. But that's too soon. So, let's get started. In the season 3 episode, No Weenies Allowed, we see a robot working at a place called Weenie Hut Juniors. Would you care for another diet cola with a lemon twist, Weenie? And while it doesn't resemble any of the robots we've seen Plankton make, does that voice sound familiar to you? Would you care for another diet cola with a lemon twist, what a quaint restaurant? I think I will sample their wares. And again, it's not like this is the default robot voice we hear in SpongeBob. There are many different voices the show has used for robot characters. What a quaint restaurant. Greetings, I am Robo 2.1. No threat detected. This is very uncomfortable. Leave my father alone! But here, they specifically recreated the voice from Plankton's robot. Let's go back to Glove World for a second. Right. In the control room, we see a machine on the wall that looks shockingly like SpongeBob. So much so that Patrick even mistakes him for it. We know Plankton has built a SpongeBob robot before in Welcome to the Chum Bucket. Maybe he repurposed it here inside of Glove World. In Krusty Cleaners, the trash robot also has a striking resemblance to Plankton's robot in the Season 9 episode Eek and Urchin. In the Season 5 episode The Patty Gadget, Squidward tries to get SpongeBob fired by replacing Placing him with a machine that creates Krabby Patties for free. But it's never explained where Squidward got this machine. Now, it doesn't resemble anything we've seen Plankton make, but a staple in a lot of Plankton's inventions Boy, is I having them resemble his likeness, especially with one eye in the middle. And that's exactly what we see with the Patty Gadget. And, and that's exactly what the fuck Plankton has! No, 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 it's not Plankton. It's not Plankton. Tease. It's not Plankton. It's not Plankton, bro. 
It's not plankton. It's way too soon to be plankton, bro. I don't see it. Okay, you tired of me which would make sense for something Plankton made. In the episode All That Glitters, Spongebob buys a super advanced talking spatula. Le spatula 3000 at your service. But in the episode Evil Spatula, we find out Plankton has a whole collection of advanced spatulas just like this Damn, one, and what? even tries to trick Spongebob into taking a talking spatula. It seems like no matter where we turn, we can find a connection between the technology in Bikini Bottom and Plankton. But if you remember in those glimpses of the future, the world isn't just ruled by robots. They've actually replaced all the existing citizens with robot copies. I am Spongebob. And believe it or not, this is also something we can already see happening in no Bikini way. Bottom today. Get ready to see how far this robot vision has really gone. Show us! Hey! It's hey! Anima. Victoria, what are you, uh, what are you, what are you doing here? Um, I was just around, thought I'd stop by. Can I come in? Or... Uh, inside? Inside? Uh, no, 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 it's just, it's not a good time right now. Damn, knife um, to the back? In all honesty, it kind of seems like you're going through something. I just wanted to check in on you. Uh, I appreciate that. It's just, I'm fine. You know, uh, it's just the, the SpongeBob stuff is been keeping me really busy. I'm a little stressed about that. And, um, but I'm, I'm fine. You should, you should probably go. You're being really weird. You're not answering your phone. You're living in total darkness. Can you just talk to me? What's going on? Well, you sound like me. Fine. Okay. <laughs> talk is just not here. Fine. Do you want to get coffee or something? Sure. Fine. Yeah. Um, uh, I gotta put something away. Just stay right here. Trust no one! Now, we know Plankton has tried to turn people into robots before. SpongeBob, come in here! <laughs> or should I say Robot Bob? But he gave up after SpongeBob was too annoying. You've gotta take that yellow nightmare back! <laughs> it's not worth it! But I don't think this was his only attempt. In the season 11 episode, The Checkup, SpongeBob and Squidward are trying to give Mr. Krabs a health checkup by testing his pinching reflexes. Okay, I brought plenty of things for Mr. Krabs to pinch. A pinch of salt! Ah! And one of the things they have him pinch is a baby. A baby's cheek! Ah! Damn! Oh, woo! I was about to say! Hmm, some random baby just turned out to be a robot, and it's never explained why. That's weird even for Spongebob, yeah. but things get even more interesting when we go back to Season 9 in the episode Plankton's Pet, where Plankton tries to steal a Krabby Patty using the exact same purple baby as a robot disguise. Okay. Diabolical fiend! I can't believe this is working! And we're not even done yet. If we go even further back to the Season 5 episode, Goo Goo Gas, okay. we can actually see the exact moment where Plankton gets the idea to turn the baby into a robot. Why, you're Damn, he waited seasons for that one! I could take your formula whenever I wanted to, and you couldn't do a thing about it. <laughs> That's it! Finally, victory will be mine! Now, in the episode, it's implied that this is just him getting the idea to turn everyone into babies to steal the formula, but isn't it crazy how it also perfectly lines up with the purple baby fish suddenly turning into a robot in future episodes? Yeah. Now, there's another fish who's always been very suspicious to me. The strangely realistic news anchor fish. All of Bikini Bottom is a buzz over the identity of a mysterious flying man who helps people. Who knows what superhero act of courage he'll astound us with. Very true, he's the only real fish. He's the only real fish. With next. In a show full of cartoon characters, why is he the only realistic one? In fact, I made a whole theory about how there are evolved cartoony fish that can- BECAUSE! He's on the TV! Right? No, nigga! talk in primitive realistic fish who can't, but as many people have pointed out, the one exception to this is the realistic news anchor fish. Well, if you ask me, he looks a lot like one of those animatronic singing fish you yeah, buy at a gift shop. That. Especially the way he mechanically moves his mouth and how we only ever see one side of him. So already a pretty strong indication that he might be a robot, but there's also something familiar about his voice. What kind of cruel, careless, evil person? I'll canvas all what? the tedious low Hey, what happened? Bro, why have I never noticed that? Why have I never noticed that? Why have I never noticed that? What? 
Brow dives in town. That's right. He has the same voice as Plankton. And if you're going to take over the world, then you're definitely going to want to control the media. But how exactly is Plankton replacing oh, these people? Oh my gosh. Well, I think the season 10 episode, Whirly Brains, gives us an important clue. In this episode, suddenly a new toy becomes extremely popular in Bikini Bottom, the Whirly Brain. Just flip your lid. Attack the propeller. Who the hell would ever do that? Hundreds of feet into the air. I never wanted to draw my brain. Yeah, it's, it's a weird episode. So people are actually voluntarily attaching devices to their brains and ripping them out of their bodies, uh. and no one thinks that this is suspicious? If you ask me, this seems like the perfect way to replace someone with a robot. Yes, Remember, yes it does. Remember, in Welcome to the Chum Bucket, Plankton told us how he turns people into robots. I'll be forced to remove your brain and implant it in my robot chef! By removing their brains. But is there any proof that he's the one behind the Whirly Brain toys? Let's take a look at the new Spongebob Bob prequel the Patrick Star Show. <laughs> Every once in a while, the show cuts to this stop-motion parody of Frankenstein with Plankton, and he actually uses Whirly Brains to conduct his experiments. It's not super clear how this all connects to the main show. I mean, we do see Patrick interact with the stop-motion Plankton at some point, so they're at least in the same universe, but regardless, it's still a solid connection. We see another head-based gadget in the season 11 episode, Bottle Burglars, an invisible helmet being advertised in a magazine for only 99 cents. And in the same episode, we see Plankton using the exact exact same helmet. Crabs will never see me coming in visuals. Now, maybe this is just implying that he bought the helmet from the magazine, but that doesn't really line up with what we know about Plankton as an inventor. Plus, I can't see them selling a tiny version of the helmet just for Plankton. Seems a lot more likely Got that Plankton point. created the helmet and is selling them to the people of Bikini Bottom, possibly as a way to create more robots. All right, so we're starting By to turning get them invisible. your idea of how Plankton plans on turning the citizens of Bikini Bottom into robots. But there is one more character that I believe has already been secretly assimilated into a robot. Who do you think that is? Who do you think that is? I, I really have no guess. Who's already a robot that doesn't seem like a robot? Come on. I don't know either. And it's not some random background character either. It's one of the main characters in SpongeBob SquarePants. Okay, that narrows it down. It's a main character. Who do you think is a robot out of the main characters? No way, no way, no way, no way. Who? SquarePants. This final part of the robot invasion theory is going to completely change the way you look at the entire show. Are you ready? I'm ready. This is the Patrick Star. I fucking knew it. I knew it. I had it in my head. That's why I said no. How though? You got to break that shit down. Put it in a stogie. Roll it. Smoke that hoe and let me know. Because. Alex. Alex. Shit. Victoria? 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 Patrick Star Theory! Now, I fully realize saying Patrick is a robot is a very bold claim, mm -hmm. but hold your judgments till the end. Right. By far, the most requested theory I get on this channel is to cover Patrick Starr, and more specifically, his inconsistent intelligence. Throughout the entire show, there are these little moments where Patrick suddenly says something smart. I'm a bit more complicated than that. The inner machinations of my mind are an Boy, I'm fucking mind. shaking over here. I'm ready, I'm ready. Milk. There's so many examples of this happening that many people have actually made their own theories about it. Is Patrick secretly a genius and just pretending to be dumb? Does he have a secret split personality? Ugh. I diagnosed Patrick Star with trauma-induced anxiety triggered spontaneously duplicative multi-intellectual DID with additional paranoid schizophrenic delusions of a mental multiverse. Uh, uh, maybe, but I've come to a bit of a different conclusion. Have you ever noticed how every time we see Patrick try to think, there's either sparks or smoke coming out of his head? <laughs> and almost every time we see inside of Patrick's head, it's it represented with gears or bolts. some kind of machinery. Now, 
Now, we're supposed to assume that this is just a cartoony way to visualize thoughts, but what's strange is just how consistent they are with it. And even stranger, none of the other characters' thoughts are visualized this way. Just got an order from the boss. Dump everything that isn't about Damn. the mining. Squidward's happy gland is forced to take shelter in the recesses of his mind. It's Damn, Pat. Patrick seems to have this robotic association with it. They him. got Just you, look at bro. how detailed they are with it. While Patrick's head is sparking in rule of dumb, if you look closely, you can see a spring pop out of him and even a hole left behind by the spring. Ugh. That is such a small detail that no one would notice unless you were going frame by frame. And if this is just supposed to be a metaphor inside of Patrick's head, how come SpongeBob clearly sees the spring come out? Okay, okay, so let's entertain the idea for a moment that Patrick might be some sort of robot. How would he have gotten converted, and why does this cause him to randomly become smart every once in a while? Well, I looked at all the scenes where Patrick suddenly does something smart, and I noticed a bit of a pattern. There are two different types of these moments. His eyes get all like, well, I'm quite sophisticated and I know a lot of there are times when we think he's saying something intelligent. Wait, SpongeBob! We're not cavemen! We have technology! But then it's revealed he's not actually being smart. <laughs> This doesn't contradict his character at all. Patrick is someone who doesn't see himself as dumb, so there's lots of times when he tries to be smart, but he fails. Dumb people are always blissfully unaware of how dumb they really are. <laughs> but there are also moments where he actually does do something undeniably smart. Wait a minute, Squidward. They might be onto something. We could filter the CO2 through our ballast tanks, refire the engines, and ride the shockwave out of here. Wow. He's right! Exactly! He immediately acts oblivious to the fact that he was being smart. We're going through with your plan, Patrick! Yay! What plan? So, I kept track of these two different types of moments, and it seems like after season three is when he suddenly switches from pretending to be smart to actually having these smart moments. Okay. And this switch perfectly lines up with the season four episode, Patrick's Smarty Pants. Okay. In this episode, Patrick falls off a cliff and gets his head knocked off. SpongeBob accidentally replaces his head with some brain coral, which makes him become a genius. <laughs> I find all this laughter to be highly illogical. In the end, they switch back to his normal head and Patrick goes back to his usual stupid self. But take a closer look at the scene when he first puts on the brain coral. Here's your head. <laughs> now, many people have interpreted these gears with cobwebs as a metaphor for Patrick's brain never being used until now, but these gears are not from Patrick's brain. His brain came off during the fall, which means these gears are, are from entirely his body. from nope. the brain coral. Oh, and at okay. the end of the episode, oh. when they remove the brain coral, we can still see the electrical plug attached to it. We are no longer seeing a metaphorical representation inside of someone's head. We are seeing this plug from an outside perspective. Mm -hmm. The brain coral is just like the Whirly Brains, a robotic device that plugs into your brain to control you. Isn't it convenient that Patrick just happened to land next to a pile of coral that looked identical to his head? Is it possible that Plankton saw this as an opportunity to add another victim to his robot invasion? But after Patrick removed it, he went back to normal, right? He completely stopped Plankton's plan, right? Well, one season later, in the episode Sing a Song of Patrick, Patrick attempts to use his brain again, and we see the exact same gears inside of his head. Come on, you stupid brain! Work! The creators went out of their way to recreate the exact placement of all the gears from the brain coral. Which means the head Patrick put on at the end of Patrick's Smarty Pants was not his head. It was another piece of robotic brain coral. But it seems like for whatever reason, this brain coral isn't as effective as the first one. And he's only able to have rare moments of genius. In the season 12 episode, Spongebob's Big Birthday Blowout, right? Patrick has another one of his smart moments. Oh, would you look at the hour? It's almost time for me to take Spongebob on that tour so you guys can take What's that, Patrick? But this moment in particular is very interesting because Plankton is actually there to witness it. And take a guess how Plankton responds to him. I guess even a broken moron can be right once a day. He calls Patrick a broken moron because he knows He's Patrick broken. is a broken one of his experiments. And if you still don't believe me, in the newest episode of season 13, The Goofy Scoopers, we get this scene. This stinks. I wanted to go backstage for an autograph. Plankton was here. Yes, he certainly was. Damn. And that is the robot invasion theory. Thank you very much. Dang. Okay.
Well, it's still a lot of Okay, robot invasion Holes. theory done. Hey, we just passed 500,000 subscribers. Oh, nice, nice, Thank you guys nice. so much. This is honestly a dream come true for me. I mean, I've always wanted to have this many people watching me for um, SpongeBob theories. You guys wouldn't like all Alex. immediately unsubscribe and leave me if I stop making I sense a little bit of sarcasm. Uh, thanks again for watching. I've been your host, the, the SpongeBob guy. I will Stop see you. Stop calling yourself I'll, that. I'll, I'll see you guys. Mm. Where's Victoria? Do uh, not give me the silent treatment right now. No. I swear to God, if you did something, I'll. No, where? <laughs> Victoria is. That's how I talk. Thanks for the hair. Oh my god! Whoa! Where you? you about to get. Where were you? Stab! I was using your bathroom. Why the fuck are you pointing a knife at me? Shit, uh. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, you, you cannot be here right now. No, I am not leaving until you tell me what's going on. Grab her I'm ass, ass tentacle monster! Explain everything to you later. You just. You cannot be in here. Why are you so afraid of me being in your house? Victoria, I promise you, this is not the time. We have to leave right now. Your muse isn't gonna eat me! What? Bitch, how you know about my muse? What? You mean the big tentacle monster in my basement? How do you know about my muse? Yeah. How do you know about that? I have one too. What? That was fucking great! That was a great way to end that! That was a great way to end that! Okay! Okay, all right, man. All right, all right. How about that robot theory, huh? <laughs> this, I'm not gonna lie, this one was not as intense as I thought it would be. It was still fire. It was still fire. But you know, robots, man, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they take over, man? What you, what you gonna do when the, when, when the robots take over, man? <laughs> no, but that was it for this episode, man. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. I sure did. And if you like that, if you like that, please hit the like, subscribe, bell. And we have a great day after that. You know what I'm saying? But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, hold it down. I do the most. Roll it. Light it. Then I talk. Pass it to my